Thanks, Ralph. My name is Barry Bashu, and my wife and I raise flowers, bedding plants, vegetables, and berries. We're also involved in the local farmer's market. I am president of the Oregon Farm Bureau and have been asked by our local farmers and ranchers to help defeat ballot measure 15119. Farm Bureau members, leaders, and decision makers are family farmers and ranchers with all types and sizes of farms from organic to conventional. The last editorials in the Upper Rogue Independent and the Mail Tribune are the best summary of the real and negative impacts of the anti-GMO ballot measure. I have some that I'll put on the back table for you if you'd like to take some on the way out. I've been intrigued by comments in the press by Elise Hickey to the press that she should be able to raise what she wants on her farm. So do the other farmers in the ballot. The difference is that she wants the law to stop you from doing it. Seems particularly disingenuous to me. There's been much discussion of the cost of this ballot measure. The county has indicated that it can cost more than $200,000 to administer a year. Enforcement actions can cost much more. To a county that is due to spend as much as $5 million from its reserves this year alone, that is an enormous expense. In addition to the cost to local taxpayers, consider the cost to individual farmers. Proponents of the measure claim that the county does not have to enforce the measure and that citizen enforcement is an option. Why spend the time and money to pass a ballot initiative if you are not concerned enough about the issue to have it enforced? We have seen the result of citizen enforcement already in this county when a citizen snuck onto private property in the middle of the night and in an act of cowardice destroyed someone else's crop. Is that really the kind of enforcement you want for your county? The cost to farmers of defending themselves in court from allegations by neighbors can be overwhelming. What's more, if no violations are found, the county would still be responsible for the costs. There have been comparisons to the counties in California that ban GMO production and their costs. Since those counties have no established GMO production, the comparisons lack any relevance. In fact, in Mendocino County, the Agriculture Department is quoted in news reports as saying, California and Oregon present a completely different paradigm. I won't spend a lot of time talking about the science. The editorial boards have done a great job of presenting that. But the evidence is clear and overwhelming that GMO technology is safe and has tremendous benefits in combating world hunger and reducing the number of pesticides used. USDA confirms that no farmer has lost or will lose their organic certification because of the inadvertent presence of GMO or cross-pollination. Despite the folklore, no farmer has ever been sued for the inadvertent presence of GMO. U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack appointed more than 20 farmers and ag industry representatives to a committee to study biotechnology and agriculture for the 21st century. This committee, which I served on, met for more than a year and a half. This broad-based committee representing all types and practices of agriculture was not presented with a single case of a farmer who had sustained any economic loss due to the presence of GMO from any group, organization, or individual. As to the examples used by the proponents of 1519, the farmers cited did not have their crops tested or confirm any existence of GMO before they destroyed their crops. Additionally, the discovery of Roundup Ready wheat on one farm in eastern Oregon did not stop the sale or harvest of wheat in Oregon. Markets stayed open and wheat continued to be sold, harvested, and shipped to all markets except the two in Asia who opened their markets once the USDA finished their investigation. The USDA system for investigation worked. I am proud of Oregon's diverse and productive agriculture. We have over 220 quality commodities and a reputation for quality. No segment is any more or less important than the other. This should not be about organic versus conventional methods of farming. Farm Bureau has a long history of defending the rights of organic farmers as aggressively as conventional farmers. We want to be able to thrive and produce on our farms and make planting and harvesting decisions that best suit our land, our markets and our farmers. I am at a loss to why others would want to mandate a production practice or crop selection for their neighbors. The proponents of the ban have routinely used the word or term family farmers. There are family farmers and ranchers in this valley who want to be able to rely upon GMO technology. They talk about protecting the family farm and yet their ballot measure talks specifically about protecting organic farms as if the two are mutually exclusive. How sad. 
as the Mail Tribune pointed out, this is about an ideology. Ideology does not feed people. Farmers and ranchers do.